All right, hi, I'm Poyo, and I want to talk to you about spam. Um, I work on a program called IMAP Spam Be Gone, ISBG, and um, the idea behind ISBG is that uh, sometimes you have a mailbox somewhere, and you don't control it. So your ISP runs a mailbox that you like, you're in a company, and they run a, a mailbox for you, and you don't have control over it, and their spam filter is really bad. So you don't have control over the spam, and you're receiving all the spam that you don't want. Um, well, ISBG fixes that. What it does is that uh, you run your own spam assassin server, and uh, you're connecting through IMAP to that mailbox and filtering your spam locally with your own spam assassin server, and then classifying that spam through IMAP. Uh, so it's a, it's a Python script that was written 10 years ago, and then it's evolved. Uh, I've been maintaining this for uh, maybe three or four years now, and I have a live demo of it working here. So we're just going to wait for this to go away. No? Um, it will. Okay. So uh, you can see here uh, I'm running ISBG uh, with the delete and expunge IMAP uh, flags. So we're telling uh, that we want to delete the spam and expunge it. So these are two common IMAP filters. And then I'm passing it to the IMAP host I'm using. Um, I'm saying this is my IMAP, well, this is my mailbox. This is my username for this. I'm using this for tests mainly. Then telling it uh, where the inbox is, where the spam box is, and telling it to run in verbose mode. So it runs. And since it's in verbose, it's going to tell us a bunch of stuff that you normally won't see. In. So it starts, and it's starting to tell you um, it looks for uh, IMAP IDs of these messages to keep track of them. So there's a track file that keeps track of all the emails that's seen so it doesn't run again and again and again on the same messages. And then you can see it's, uh, it's fetching this message. So this is one is at the 1092, uh, and then it gives a score for it. This is a spam assassin score based on the Bayesian filter. So it goes through a bunch of them. By default, um, ISBG runs in batches of 50, so you can change that. But it's, it's nice, you run a cron job, and it runs like each five minutes and checks for all the 50 messages it hasn't seen. And see, we've just discovered a spam here, oops, with a score of uh, 101 on five. So this is my own spam assassin server with the own filters I've set. And uh, yeah, it's giving it spam. And it's going to continue like this for a while, looking through various emails, and at the end, it expunges uh, all the spam it's found. Oops, let's go back to this. So it expunges uh, all the, the spam it's found. It's, uh, it tells you we found eight spams and 50 messages, uh, and then it logs out. So that's basically it. It's uh, ISBG. Uh, it's on GitHub, and it's on PyPy. Uh, sadly, it's not on in Debian yet. Maybe one day it will. But that, that's it. Yeah. Why is BG? Why is Pami going? I don't know if there's other, other persons. Yeah. yeah. I know it when I see it. Oh, I don't see anything. It should be on the, the main monitor in the front. Oh, uh, there's nothing. Okay. It can show there. Yeah, it needs to be closed. Ah, all right. So um, I don't mess around and uh, just move the windows to the other screen and hope that that works. Um, so what I want to show is something that happened. Oh yeah, um, sorry. 
I'm Matthias Klum. I am uh, mostly the upstream maintainer. So upstream is the metadata format for software components. And yeah, I work on GNOME and KDE stuff and yeah, a bunch of other things. And yesterday, I, um, I actually read a bug report from someone who um, complained that in the GNOME Software Center, uh, the fonts weren't actually showing uh, in the right language. So uh, some fonts that were in, uh, in Indian uh, scripts were just showing uh, with Latin letters and therefore looking ugly. So I fixed that bug. And meanwhile, uh, Ian Lane was looking uh, at my shoulder and saw that every single font rendering had the uh, standard pangram, a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, uh, which is a demo text that shows all the letters in the English alphabet to the users so they can evaluate whether the font is great or not. So, and this is quite boring, so he asked whether it was possible to just have more pangrams. Uh, so I just last night implemented a, a pangram randomizer which will select a different pangram depending on the font family that's, uh, that's going to be displayed. And it's, yeah, it's deterministic in that it always uses the same pangram for the same font family name, but it's also... Uh, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's deterministic in the way that it uses the same uh, pangram for the same font family all the time, but it uses a different pangram per font family. And I would love to actually show that, so this is GNOME software, uh, this is the font selection dialog, and yeah, and these are all the fonts you can select. And in theory, if you click on one of those, uh, you should see So, um, whoa, that's loud. So, uh, unfortunately, when trying to test this, we discovered another bug in GNOME software, which uh, for some odd reason doesn't happen when you run GNOME software on KDE, which uh, due to the time uh, constraint, I couldn't actually do right now. So instead, I will just to quickly show you a, some results, show you the pages on the upstream uh, generator web pages, if, I, if this thing lets me. So this is the font selection phase. It, it shows you basically all the metadata that the upstream generator extracts from the fonts, which is their e uh, which is like generated uh, screenshots, but also all the languages that uh, that the font supports. And now it will generate text like these, which contain all the letters that the English alphabet has, uh, but with different sentences, uh, instead of like having the quick brown fox show up all the time. Okay, so and soon, as soon as we fix that bug in, uh, in GNOME software, you can also see those in GNOME software itself. And yeah, that's basically it. A quick hack hap that happened yesterday with a few beer. So, yeah. Hooray, and that gets us in right at 1720. So thank you very much. There will be further sessions of live demos on, there will be one further session of live demos on Friday, and lightning talks will happen on Thursday. And this session only, if you have questions of the speakers, please address them directly. Thank you.